so last time we talked about the significance testing, which is basically saying, can I reject some null hypothesis? Today I'm going to talk about what's called simple hypothesis testing. And honestly, we already talked about this a little bit in different contexts already, so some of this stuff is going to look familiar. But basically now the setup is I have H0, which I call the null hypothesis, and I have a new hypothesis, H1, which I'm going to call the alternate hypothesis. And what I have in each case is a PDF of how the random variable should look under each of these hypotheses. So kind of before we talked about these uh, under the name class conditional probabilities, right? Uh, I remember we had this example with salmon and tuna. This is actually the same example, just given a different way. And so again, I have a decision rule that says if this, you know, sum of x's, for example, is above a certain value, I choose h1, otherwise I choose h0. So we're going to have a decision rule. And that decision rule can lead to different errors, right? So now I'm going to give these errors a name, right? So type 1 error is basically saying I decide h1, but h0 is true, right? This is kind of like saying, okay, usually the alternate, the alternate hypothesis is usually something like the patient has the disease, right? So usually uh, H0 means that something is absent and H1 means something is present, right? So if I decide that the thing is present when it's actually absent, that's what I would call basically a false alarm. And a type 2 error is when I decide that nothing was happening when actually something was happening. That's like a miss, okay? And so um, both of these have kind of real world implications for missing something or detecting something, right? So we're going to talk about how we assign some costs to these in a minute. So you may remember that we talked about the maximum likelihood test for making these decisions. The maximum likelihood decision rule and we can refer back to a previous lesson for what this was, basically said, okay, if this number, if this ratio was greater than 1, then I should choose H1, and if it's less than 1, I should choose H0, and in the middle, it's just a coin flip. Okay, it doesn't really matter. And so this thing here is called the likelihood ratio. Right? And so we talked a little bit about maximum likelihood decisions. Now, uh, then we talked a little bit about making um, what's called the maximum a posteriori decision. Okay? And actually, this is a uh, subform of what's called just generally Bayesian hypothesis testing. And if you remember anything from those previous lessons, I kept on saying that um, you know, Bayesian, when you have information, is always better than doing maximum likelihood. Right? So this is like saying, okay, we have the likelihoods, which are the class conditional distributions. We also have what are called prior probabilities, which are the underlying probabilities that I'm in each of the classes to begin with, right? So very early on, we talked about, you know, what's the probability over the whole population that the patient has the disease in the first place, right? So I could have a very rare disease, for example, and that will skew how I make my decision. And then we're also going to have costs, and this is kind of a new twist, right? The, the twist here is basically saying I, I'm basically going to uh, reward or penalize you for making various decisions, right? So this is like basically saying this is the cost of H0 being true, and I decide H0. This is the cost of H0 being true, and I decide H1. This is like the opposite, that H1 is true, and I decide H0. And this is the possibility that H1 is true, and I decide H1. So usually, these, you know, first one, last one, are usually set to be zero, because it's not like you, you incur any penalty for making the right choice. This is basically the type 1 error, or false alarm, 
and this is basically the type two error or a misdetection, right? And so this allows us in the real world to kind of assign different costs to things, right? So for example, say we're doing uh, you know luggage screening at the airport, right? And the hypothesis is H0, no explosives in your bag, H1, explosives in your bag, right? So here, maybe I would decide that, you know, the cost here maybe is like two, okay, just to use some number, right? Whereas the cost here might be 100. That is to say, it's okay if I occasionally flag somebody as needing to have their bag checked because the machine went off, but I absolutely don't want any explosives to get into the airport, right? So I don't want to have any misses, and I'm willing to tolerate some false alarms, right? And that's, you know, the kind of considerations that people have to make in real world systems all the time. And so my overall cost is going to basically be the thing that I want to minimize, right? That's like saying I have C00 times the probability of making the H0 choice given that H0 is true times the probability that H0 is true in the first place. And then I have the other costs as well. This is like saying I choose H1 given H0, probability of H0, I choose this. So basically there are four possibilities. And what I want to do is I want to minimize the expected value of the cost, right? That seems like it makes a lot of sense, and that's what's called Bayesian um, decision rule. And so I'm not going to derive it, but you can show that the decision rule actually comes down to the same likelihood ratio. So this is the same thing that we had before. I'm looking at this ratio, which again I call the likelihood ratio. And the idea here is I have a decision rule that says I'm going to choose H1 if I'm above some threshold and H0 if I'm below that threshold. And this tau is equal to a combination of the prior values and the costs. Okay. And so I'm not going to derive this because this is kind of a little bit more advanced than the basic probability course. But the idea here is that, okay, you know, supposing that I had like normal costs, um, like these things were equal to zero, and I had equal probabilities of, you know, I had equal costs for making uh, one of the errors. I don't really prioritize one of the other. Then this is just going to fall off, right? This is just going to be like the ratio of these. We already found this in an earlier um, experiment. And if I also say that, you know, if the priors are the same, right, then this tau becomes one. And that means I'm basically doing maximum likelihood, right? So that's why sometimes we call maximum likelihood uninformative priors, right? It's like saying we don't really know. But on the other hand, this is like saying, well, suppose that um, you know H1 is really um, high, or the probability of H1 is really high, right? That means that this threshold is going to be really low, and I'm going to choose H1 a lot, right? Even if this ratio here is small, I'm going to basically be cranking down my threshold and say, well, you know, I think H1 happens all the time, so the prior is good that you should choose that, right? And so this is kind of an interesting interplay between, you know, the data, what the data is telling me, my prior possibilities, and the costs for making good or bad decisions, right? So if you're interested in this kind of thing, um, you can take a whole course on this, and then there are kind of variations where maybe I don't know H1, but I know that, you know, it's like saying either the coin is fair or the coin has a higher probability of getting me heads, but I don't know exactly what that probability is. That's what's called composite hypothesis testing. And so you can, you can learn more about that. And I think that I'm going to do one worked example uh, in the next lesson to kind of make this all a little bit more concrete.